Mr. Tom Knight, if you see this, let me know you're all right. I haven't seen a comment come in from you in a long time. Just type in period, enter a single emoji, hi, something. Let us know you're all right. I don't know if you're in Texas and flooding. God forbid if you've had any health issues, but let me know you're all right, man. I've been seeing your comment since Japan. It's kind of worrying me. I haven't seen one in about a week. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, grandmas. Great news today. Is there a baby? There is a baby. Didn't you get a text? In the My phone's in there. 102 this There's morning. a baby. Dang. There's the daddy. Are we gonna go see it? Yeah, I have to work till six. All right, then we'll go up. They gotta have one more night in the hospital, so we'll be going to the hospital. How's he look? He look he looks huge, but he's only seven pounds, 10 ounces. That's not huge. His face is full. He's Venezuelan American. Ven Venezuelan male American. Venice American. It's hard to say. And my mom just went to work and I just got done listing these three pairs of nylon Columbia and ex officio pants. These were all mine. I don't need three pairs of nylon pants. They do have flaws like this one has a pen ink explosion on it. I put them up for 20 bucks a piece, free shipping. We'll see what happens. Let's go look at what's sold overnight. Sold the Sony Walkman for 19 bucks. He also sold a damaged box. We Fit Trainer Amiibo. These used to be worth like 50 to to $100 when they were really rare. Now it's not so much. I did a bulk return from Amazon and they came back pretty badly damaged. They reimbursed me a little bit of money. This sold for $20 shipped, not a bunch. The website now has all of the presentations from the Green Room Seminar on it. So for all the green people out there, speakers down here, presentation, PowerPoint is up here and it matches the speaker. It's good. The weather has improved, as you can see with the blue skies behind me. We are on our way to El Gimnasio. I'm gonna do a thrift and lift, pop into Goodwill real quick, see if I can find anything. And if I do, channel that energy and throw it towards my workout immediately after. And then after the workout, we'll come home and do Q&A Tuesday. And I did wanna address one question right now. And someone asked me if I have one American flag tank top or do I have a bunch? And I just have one. It gets washed about every week. I wear it for one or two days a week. This is not the original one. This is a replica that I got at the Green Room Meetup this year. I got my original one at a at a yard sale last year or the year before. And I used the heck out of it. I'm allowed to park here, right? See what we can find. All right, nobody got this Chicago Bear shirt yet. It's $1.99 half off. Now we will get it. A Protec Y foam roller. It's a pretty specific type of foam roller. I'm gonna get this. It's $1.99. These usually are like 40 bucks new, so this is a really good deal. I'm gonna pop on this. There's this lot of 37 MVL music video loop DVDs. This is youth ministry material. It's Christian music videos on DVD. I'm gonna give these to Andy. He loves Christian music and he loves DVDs. So this is like a combination of the two things that he loves. So I'm gonna wrap these up and give these to him as a gift. I think he'll like it. I'd say that was successful, semi-successful. Now, will it fit in the trunk? If I can get the DVDs in here, I can... the block of DVDs is such an awkward shape. It is not fitting in the trunk. Today, Tuesday, we have back, reverse grip, bent over row, weighted grip pull-ups, weighted grip chin-ups, wide grip chin-ups, lower back cable extensions, pec deck, deltoids, single arm shrugs, and calf raises. And the gym is completely empty. Can you see my scooter? Check it out. Had a good workout, now it's time for Q&A Tuesday, but before that, I did run into Publix right after the workout, and while I was getting a sub, there was a fly flying around, so I grabbed my hat, I was waiting for it to fly by so I could stun it, and then I flicked it off real quick. My sunglasses flew off of my hat into the deli maker of my sandwiches, head, and then down into the vegetables. I did not hit the fly. It was quite the embarrassing attempt. If Publix ever wants to sponsor a 10,000 subscriber reselling YouTube channel, they should definitely sponsor this channel. Anyways, let's get into Q&A Tuesday. And I'd like to welcome Deborah Creighton to the channel. She said she started watching yesterday, so I am now her favorite reseller. Thank you very much, Deborah. That's amazing that I won your heart in less than 24 hours. If you wanna have a lot of fun, go back to the Japan playlist. I'll put a link to that over here. The Japan playlist is amazing. Kind of like being there with us on the bike tour. So come along on the Japan bike tour. Only the biggest fans watch the bike tour, so yeah. I'm glad to have you on board, Deborah. I'm gonna go through questions on 
the video that I released yesterday, which is Monday's video. Lick3OMJ says, have you ever accidentally purchased fake Pokemon games? It happened to him the other day, he bought them for $5 each. I have purchased faked Pokemon or Game Boy games. The main way you can tell is by looking at the board. On the clear cartridges, you're gonna see like these Chinese stickers and the boards just look completely different. The quality of the plastic, the front label, the uh, stamped in number on the front, just the board itself are the main ways to know that. I am going to make a future video about fake versus real games. That will be coming out eventually. But yes, I have, but I don't get into them for that much. It was like $2 at a yard sale. I grabbed it, it was in a bundle. I think I have a fake Minish Cap or a link to the past game for the Game Boy Advance also. So yes, it has happened to me. Cordovay65 asked me what types of DVDs and CDs does Andy like? DVDs and, and CDs are like Andy's thing. He likes Christian rap and for DVDs, anything that's G or PG rated, he likes or watches or collects. So if you're gonna send something, please don't send anything that's PG-13 or rated R because it's garbage in, garbage out. So thank you, Cordovay65. Appreciate that, Andy will be stoked. If you send him some Christian rap CDs or some uh, DVD, uh, PG or G rated movie DVDs, things with like simple plots, anything that's Disney, cartoons, he did like Cheaper by the Dozen with Steve Martin and Hilary Duff in it. Things like that, very like kiddie G, PG rated movies. Andy likes them. So thank you, John, Cordovay65. Uh, Eric Hoffman wants to know, out of all my hiking and bicycling, what's the best moment I can remember <laughs> on your adventures? I'm grateful for wherever I am. Having a best moment would be hard to, that's hard to answer, to just say one single best moment. There's times where I've, I don't know, there's times where I've just been in such an awful rainy situation to where I'm just, there's been times where I've struggled and that moment I've felt really close to God, which could be, considered a best moment. There's been food that I've eaten that could be considered a best moment where I just had like really delicious food. Or I had a sashimi bowl with Cody in Japan where we were just starving and parched and every flavor would just, was amplified. So there's different moments like that that happen on bike tours and I'm sure on, I don't really hike that much so I don't know. Even though you say hiking, I don't hike that much. Waking up from an amazing night's sleep outside with a sunrise. I feel like I don't remember a lot of my dreams so if I do remember a dream, I'm always stoked on that. To have one single best moment. I really cannot answer one single best moment. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take the easy way out on that one. Patricia Morell was asking if that was rain from Harvey. I don't know if those were like outer bands from Harvey that hit us or if it was just tropical disturbances in the Gulf, but we have gotten a lot of rain over the past like three or four days. So it's been crazy. Anthony K747 says, do I know how easy it is to build a simple pump? I really don't. It was raining. It was crazy. I didn't have the tools. I couldn't, I didn't have the materials. We didn't have access to PVC pipes. We did create a hose siphon. That's the best we could do. But next time you're in Florida and it's raining, I would love for you to come over and build us a PVC pump to help us with the flooding. Thank you, Anthony. We just got a return in the mail. The uh, Arcteryx shirt that we sold the other day. Homeboy was not happy. I mean, he wasn't happy, but he wasn't like pissed off. Cause I told him they were it was in the pictures, man, that it had this hole in the sleeve right here. And he also said it was like, um, it was like more worn than he wanted it to be. So that got returned, that's 29 bucks. Thrifty Truckers says, I pass a lot on Guitar Heroes. I'm going to start taking a better look at them. What are the best ones to get and what should I pay for them? I told him to take a look on Amazon and eBay. If you don't sell on Amazon, take a look at your market. Just type in Guitar Hero and look at sales ranks and price points, go to eBay. Type in Guitar Hero, look at the completeds, look how thick the market is, look at sales history and price points, and then kind of see which ones are selling. I did write a Guitar Hero guide. My friend Carlos actually helped me write it and edit it. He contributed a lot of information. He was flipping a ton of Guitar Hero back in the day, back when guides were popular. We wrote that together. <laughs> My name's the only author on it because he doesn't do social media. There's a lot of money in Guitar Hero, and one day I will get into the origin of Guitar Hero story. I was the first, if not one of the first people to bring it to YouTube, to bring it to the resale space that Guitar Hero was worth money. But I will dive into actually how I learned about it. Ethan's roommate, Evan. Goodwill Bins, Tallahassee. Origin story will come one day. Dom's Deal says, hey CP, I've been finding a ton of Columbia jackets lately for super cheap. Is there a good way to tell if it's vintage? His mom also lives in Florida and Publix subs are bomb, yes. Pretty much look at the colors. If it's bright pink, aqua, purple, those kind of like 90s colors, more than likely it's going to be vintage with a certain style. Columbia had a certain logo font. It looked different on the chest. 
Always look at the tag. If it was made in USA, if it was made in Portland, if it was made in Oregon, it's a vintage Columbia piece before everything got outsourced overseas. You could also do a quick Google search for vintage Columbia, start looking at the tags and the fonts. But I mean, it, once you start seeing it over and over again, you're eventually gonna be able to tell, okay, yeah, that's vintage Columbia, that's not. If it's made in the USA, it's not modern. I'd say that's the number one telltale. So thank you for the question, Mr. Dom. Resale Rabbit says, are you sure you're not in Seattle? It's raining every day. I am sure I am not in Seattle. But thanks for the question, John. Anthony K747 says, when is the trip to Northern California for the pharmacy job? How will you do eBay sales or will you take everything down when you're in California? The job is supposed to be for like two weeks in November and two weeks in December. There's like some gappage between there. It's a really weird coverage, which is I think why they reached out to me because that particular person knows that I like the short contracts. I like the the lack of commitment and the higher rate. Because it's such a short contract, I'm demanding a higher rate per diem and everything. My contract comes out to be like 95 or 100 bucks an hour. I, I will not be taking the eBay listings down because I have a wonderful mother who knows how to ship like a boss. She's like a boss shipper. She's so good at shipping and it gives her something to do while she's watching TV and she's more than happy to ship out the eBay packages. So thank you for the question, Anthony. He also asked if I prepack them and I do not prepack them. My mom doesn't like them prepacked. She wants to make sure that is the item. It didn't get mixed up and she knows it's the right item going to the right person. Maybe I could put it in clear bags, but she likes, but she likes it knowing the item. So I do it based on how she likes it. Susan Redman asks, is there different sizing needed for photos on Etsy compared to eBay? If you have the raw photos from a camera, you probably can use those pictures from, from eBay to Etsy. If you took the pictures with your phone and then you're saving them off of eBay, trying to use them to Etsy, they're probably going to be overcropped. The resolution is going to be very small. Etsy wants you to have at least a thousand pixels wide for however they're displaying items. And I know what you mean by they kind of look funky because I've had some of the same problem with some of them on uh, Etsy, especially cropping them, the cropping the first picture, the, the display image. You want to leave a little bit of padding on Etsy. You don't want to crop like to the line of the shirt. You want to leave a little bit of padding on both sides, above the hat, below the hat, or above the shirt, below the shirt. You want some padding. So when you do that first image size, you can really hone in on the part of the shirt that you want to, let it be the whole shirt or just the graphic. I don't know what items exactly you're doing. I'd be more than happy to take a look at your Etsy store. Drop a link in the comments, I will check it out and I'll try to give you better tips than this. Photofuse seems to lower the quality a little bit of the photos. What you mainly wanna do is get good lighting, good background that you can pull it out if you wanna pull it out. And then you wanna make sure you upload it cropped with some padding onto Etsy. And I find that that helps a lot. Hopefully that helps. I know Etsy pictures can be a pain. The more you do it, the more used to it you get. I do not have the same workflow for eBay as I do for Etsy. Good question, thank you for the question. Thrifty Trucker says, hello, new to your channel. Where besides eBay, Amazon, and Etsy do you make money to pay off your loans? Uh, him and his wife used to teach the financial peace course. I make a very little amount of money from Amazon affiliates. I make a very little amount of money from the Guitar Hero book. That's probably negligible. The business that I help to run, the greenroomuniversity.com website, we sell digital products, we sell memberships there. We put on a seminar this year, we throw events, and I also make money working as a pharmacist, but I haven't worked any hours as a pharmacist in 2017. Towards the tail end of this year, hopefully the contract will pan out and I will make a nice chunk. Gregory McCoy says, hey, just found your channel. I am also local Floridian thrifting, same stores. I was wondering why do you do merchant fulfilling Amazon over FBA? And the reason that I'm doing Amazon Merchant Fulfill is I'm trying to get approved of Merchant Fulfilled Prime. I thought it was 50 orders. Now I'm seeing 80 orders, I think, when I sign in of Merchant Fulfilled Prime within like three months. So I'm trying to get a lot of Merchant Fulfilled orders out so Amazon can see the metrics and approve me for Merchant Fulfilled Prime. And I believe once I hit Merchant Fulfilled Prime, I get those discounted Amazon rates passed down to me so I will be able to fill th fulfill things at a rate that is favorable compared to other merchant fulfilled people. I wanna have that ability, that tool in my resale toolbox. Once I have had something sit for too long merchant fulfilled, I have been converting it to FBA and sending out FBA boxes. I don't have enough stuff to do a bunch of FBA shipments, so I'm just 
filling up the bin and then merchant fulfilling it as it sells. Plus you can, mer you can list it merchant fulfilled while you're in the store and get rid of that item and not even have to sell it, not even have to send it to FBA if it's something that sells really quickly. Like three OMJ says, hey, why aren't you practicing pharmacy? I don't know where I'm going to be in my life enough right now to settle down and get a nine to five, eight to four type of job. I did not particularly enjoy working at Walgreens, not anything against the company, but just that lifestyle did not suit me as a person. I found myself dragging my feet to work, talking to myself very negatively, all these negative thoughts, negative self-talk, negative feeling. By lowering my necessities, my expectations, okay with not making $55 an hour. Two weeks of vacation a year, I'm pretty much my own boss. Every day I wanna go to the gym, I get to go to the gym. I could hop on a flight tomorrow and go to California if I wanted to. I could go visit Chris, the Bonafide Hustler, whenever I get the van working. I can drive around Florida and thrift my brains out. The amount of freedom that I have is so amazing that I would not trade that for working pharmacy right now at this point in my life. It's a great question, and a lot of people probably think I'm a bloody idiot for doing it, but that is my answer. Uh, Steven Hibbert asks, what percent of my business is FBA? And it really varies like month to month. Right now I'm hitting it very hard on eBay. I'm liquidating a lot of stuff. E eBay and Amazon have both been close to $3,000 a month. It varies, honestly, it varies month to month. Is that inventory available to be listed on FBA or is it restricted and you have to put it on eBay? Does it have a super high rank? Uh, it all, it literally just depends on your finds, what you find. It depends on what I find and where I'm at. Once I hit van life, I'm probably gonna FBA more because I'm not gonna wanna carry around a ton of inventory. Or maybe I will create a system to where I can do eBay in the van on the road. I don't know. It's a great thing about this business being my own boss is I don't know what is around the corner. It varies all the time, but I would say 60% eBay, 40% Amazon. Right now at this moment in time, I don't know. Swag God 22 says, is that a 50cc scooter? No license required to drive. No, it's a 250cc. You need a license to drive a 250cc. This thing is like a full-fledged twist and go motorcycle. It goes pretty good at green lights and I can get up to 75, almost up to 80 miles per hour downhill with a tailwind. Went all the way back to the how to fix a Pokemon game. So I think I answered everyone's questions. Actually, I did get one question on Instagram. So let me pull that one up. Falling from Metropolis said, so you are a pharmacist. I said, yes, thumbs up emoji. I'm curious, how hard was it? And honestly, it's going to vary person to person. It's going to vary time to time, you know? It, that is just solely my opinion on how hard it was. For me, from like a scale of zero being incredibly easy and 10 being incredibly difficult, I'd say it was like a four or a five. I did not have to take the PCAT, which is the preliminary um, standardized tests for the specific school that I went to. So that already like lowered the difficulty a lot. I didn't have to study. I didn't have to waste money or uh, time on prep courses. I just applied to the school, got in, started taking classes. The teachers that I got for the most part were good. It was an outrageous workload. Of there is work that you're gonna put in, yes, but it is not impossible. But anything that's going to increase your earning potential, it's going to make you more valuable with a degree. It's not going to be incredibly easy. Otherwise, everybody would do it but it's not impossible, otherwise nobody would do it. Thanks everybody again for the questions. Thanks for hanging out with me today and getting through this long drawn out Q&A. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop them in a comment throughout the week. I'll try to go through them and answer them next Tuesday. If you haven't already, turn the thumb blue and I will talk to you guys in the morning. Stick around till after I hit the lens if you wanna see baby Christian because me and my mom are going to Tampa in couple of hours. So I will see you guys then. Bye. So just like that, me and mom magically transported. We are in Tampa at the women's hospital. Oh, oh congratulations. Oh my goodness. Thanks for the surprise. It's so fabulous. Feels amazing. So it's incredible, incredible experience. Did you see the whole thing? I got it all on video. Oh, you got it all on video. Stay tuned for tomorrow's vlog. It's going to be pixelated. Get him, mom. Yeah. Oh, get him. Get the first Florida grandbaby. <gasps> oh. He's very American. Thank you.